Reliance Commercial Finance presents India SME Forum 2012. Find out the secrets of success in a series of seminars exclusively for smart entrepreneurs. Join India's biggest SME initiative to boost your business and celebrate SME achievers with India SME 100 Award. So obviously as if I want to become an entrepreneur, there's something what I'm looking at in terms of creating. And people say I require some bit of a thing which I need to look at in terms of uh, making that happen, the journey. There is men, there is missionary, there is also money. And there is various forms of money. Obviously, as uh, Swamik was saying about how lenders like Reliance Commercial Finance can play a role in terms of taking that path. But also there is a risk capital. There is an equity what is required along with debt. And there are various forms of debt. Venture capital, angel funding, private equity plays that role or providing the risk capital or a private equity or an equity capital for you so that you can leverage the growth. You can go across and pile on more money through the debt which is coming across to you so that you can think through a long-term plan of creating a large impact and a sh stakeholder value and multiplying the wealth. And that's what I'm going to be talking about in the next 15, 20 minutes. Before I go there, maybe let's just hear some stories. And I've, I've got a couple of them here. And these two are from this city, given the fact that we are sitting in Chennai. I just thought that let me just take the uh, help of a couple of things. What we I've been part of it. Our firm, People Capital, has been part of it. And the first name will be extremely familiar for the folks from this city, which is Chennai, which is a sales manager who's been going across and almost in charge of selling day-to-day, house-to-house, vacuum cleaners, and water filters. Today is the second largest mobile retail chain owner in India from this city, which is nothing but universal. I'm sure all of you would have either walked into or bought something from there. First generation entrepreneur who started with the barest minimum of money to be the second largest retail chain owner in mobile in India. Let me turn to the next one. An IT company CEO who has to become an entrepreneur to be the fastest growing diagnostic chain in India and among the three third largest in the country today, built in less than three years. Again, he's an IT entrepreneur. He was CEO of the company, of an IT company, turned entrepreneur, built this company to be the third largest and fastest growing diagnostic chain in India in the last three years. What's a common link? The fact that they had the vision, they had the strategy, they had the zeal to make it happen, but beyond that, they also had access to high octane fuel, which is nothing but venture capital or a private equity. Very, very important to have this. Obviously, there is a role being played by various forms of financing, but if you need to have that sort of a capital which will take you to through that growth plan, extremely aggressive impact and the value and the wealth creation, you need to have access to that. It has to be supplemented by debt, but obviously, debt also requires certain amount of restriction. For example, I think Sawik was, was selling in the beginning. It requires a capacity, a capability from your side in terms of servicing on a regular basis. It does need the security. Uh, we, we were having a little bit of a chat before the session, short, uh, session started, sitting in the next room, how the trend of lenders today changing more pronounced way, going from unsecured to secure lending. And the fact that as an early entrepreneur, I may not have access to have a, pro provide that sort of a security. Does it mean that will I, my growth be stymied? I can't go through that process? Or can I have an access to risk capital? As I said, to build this large impact, you need to have multiple things coming in place. I call them as the four M's. Men, material, missions, obviously the money. I don't want to talk about this because each one of those sessions in terms of what is the importance of men, material, missions, but maybe a little bit of touch on the mission, on the money. Yes, when I start in, as an entrepreneur, if I'm starting my business, I can have an access to funds coming from multiple sources. And we can call them as 3F. Founders, which is my own money. Friends, a family. 
some of my friends say that actually there is a 4F there, which is the fools who give me money, who are nothing but the angels. People who come across and believe in my story and saying that, oh, I believe Srini is a good guy. He can make this happen and he'll let me give him a little bit of money. They are nobody, none but angels who are giving that money. But if I want to continue that trend and get to talk to a larger set of money which is available to me as an equity capital, as a risk capital, as a share capital beyond the sources, which is the trust money, what I call, or a non-institutional money, you need to think through in terms of the institutional money what is required. And that's where the pool of capital, which is known as venture capital or private equity, comes into play. And, and the, where are the various business cycles out of which each one of them will go through, make it happen. But beyond, before even going there, as an entrepreneur, we've been talking about in terms of being compliant from a, from a uh, regulatory perspective, being transparent and corporate governance. I think we've heard that in the last 20, 30 minutes. Let me ask you, what is the most important law, LAW, which you need to follow if you want to become an entrepreneur? Income tax? Can I have some suggestion? Is it income tax, sales tax, excise duty? What is that? I call it as father-in-law. <laughs> because he's the guy who trusts me and gives me that money to start the business. So that's jokes apart. But having said that, if I want to go through the transition saying that as an equity capital, what are the sources available? When I'm small, I require what is known as seed financing. I'm not really going to go through. I'm leaving behind a copy of this presentation in the interest of time. But quickly touching upon the seed capital to a startup financing to a first stage capital going right up to an IPO, M&A. We do have Vishnu going to talk about how uh, institutions like BSA will provide that sort of a platform. But good to say, as a startup funding from the stage where I can put my money of 10 lakhs, 15 lakhs, 20 lakhs to become a publicly traded, listed IPO company, I have a transition path happening. I have to go through various stages and various risk written orientations of the capital which is going to be available to me. And that's where a venture capital fund or a private equity fund will play a role. I'm going to touch upon a little later how they will talk to us. Having said that, how large is this industry today in India? It will be worth mentioning today. It's become a reasonably large source of money for the entrepreneurs like ourselves to make the journey happen. To an extent, it was as large as larger than the IPO markets in some of these five years, what I put in this, in this slide. They were as much as 15 to 13 billion dollars per year, money which has been funded through venture capital private equity funds into the entrepreneurial ecosystem in India. Yes, it's gone through a little bit of a churn like what's the other financial market. It's come down to the levels of eight to nine billion dollars in the last one or two years, but even then it's a significant size. It is still even the last year larger than the IPO market. It is still larger than the IPO market in India. That's the importance of venture capital private equity market in India in terms of providing the risk capital for entrepreneurs in terms of their growth plans. But having said that, when I'm talking to a private equity venture capital money, why are they interested to give me money? What are their intentions? Obviously, they are there to make money. They are giving you what is a risk capital. They are following, they will part of your journey to make it happen. I'm quoting there KKR, which is one of the largest private equity funds in the world. The founder of KKR, Henry Kravis, says that any fool can buy a company. You should be congratulated when you sell the company with profit. And that's the intention of a venture capital or private equity fund manager who is giving you money. He's obviously there for a limited period of time. He's there with you much longer than the flyby night operators where I can go across and talk to the nearby real estate operator to give me a 20 lakhs of rupees or a 50 lakhs of rupees. The venture capital private equity investors typically invest with a time origin of anywhere between five years to six years. But at the end of those five years or six years, they would require an exit provided to them. And how does that exit happen? Either by way of an IPO in, on the stock exchanges or through an M&A process. And as an entrepreneur, if I have the money to buy him back, I can buy him back at that intention, at those sort of returns. Next comes to the question which I've not touched upon, saying that what are the returns what he's expecting? Is it 12%? Is it 15%? Is it 
let's understand he's providing you a risk capital unlike a debt you're not guaranteeing any returns on that let's think through let's step back and see in our own money what do we do if i have a thousand rupees I can go and put it in a fixed deposit and get to 8 to 9% interest, interest on that. I can go put it into a company's deposit, can get 12 to 13% interest on that. Hopefully, I put it into a mutual fund, make 18, 19% on that, I hope. Go put it into the public markets, I hope, I hope, get 20 to 22% interest on that. All these are fairly liquid, traded with indexed and uh, a transparent mechanism. If, as a venture capital, I'm coming and giving you money in an illiquid, closely held company and not having any control how the operations are going to be run, my expectations on the returns will be much higher than the public market returns. And there is a justification behind that, and I'm more than happy to talk about it a little later in the interest of time. Having said that, the fact that you want to talk to a venture capitalist you want to talk to be a good, credible angel investor, good, credible private equity fund manager is just not for money. It's beyond money. Unlike a traditional lender, I'm not talking about a new age lender, unlike a traditional lender, the equity investor of a venture capital or a private equity investor tend to provide you little more than money because he acts as a consultant or a board as of observer sitting with you. It is in its interest to create the value in your company so that the pie size increases and he get benefited by the wealth which is getting created. He does act with you, act along with you in terms of your expansion plans, your recruitment in your strategic directions, your MAs, your corporate governance, attracting the right talent, attracting the right board members, very, very involved, extremely closely associated partnership is the role what a venture capital angel investor will play with you. There is a journey involved in terms of the fact that how we want to access the money from a venture capital private equity, what is known as a due diligence process. Fairly well involved process. I was again talking, I was, uh, uh, I was listening to why uh, Sovik was uh, giving how quick they are in terms of in some of the loan dispersal which is there to credit. But unlike that process, when you're talking to a fund manager, this can be a fairly involved process because it is a long-term investment. It is something where you want to be clear about who will sit along with you, who is going to be owning stake in your company as an equity investor. So it's as involved decision-making process from your side or from their side. So the whole process of due diligence, the whole process of getting access to this fund can take anywhere from three to six months. I've been part of some of the investments where the whole process from the first meeting till the time actually the money hit the bank as an equity investment in the company was as long as one year. One year it can take. But it is worth investing in that of time and efforts from your side because it is long-term equity partnership. The way we compare ourselves is it's not a one-night one stand. It may not be a lifetime marriage. It's not, not like an Indian marriage, but surely it is a Western marriage, at least where you are there together, at least for the five to six years. It is a tough selection process. A fund manager who looks at close to 500 to 1,000 companies in a year will invest typically into two to three companies. That's the size of filtering what happens. I'm not saying that other people do not go through the process, but it is a process of rigor and selection what is good from both the sides to make that happen. Founders, 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 founders. That's the most important what we look at. We're not looking at security. We're not looking at in terms of immediate capabilities in terms of creating returns and immediate servicing which can happen on a quarter on basis. I'm looking at a big picture at the end of five or six or seven years, how large this can be in terms of uh, impact to be created for you and for me as an investor. So what are the other critical other areas what I look for when I'm talking to you beyond the founders? It's a team beyond the founders, the business model, the growth strategy. How do I go create that growth kicker to take this high octane fuel? It is, we, again, I'm sorry I, I keep giving these examples, but I, let me give one more example. We keep saying that it is like there are certain I can't put aviation fuel in an auto and ask it to run at 500 kilometers an hour. If I'm putting aviation fuel, I have to put it in a rocket 
and make it run at 500 to 800,000 kilometers. That's the expectations of venture capital. The fact that if you have an access to a venture capital private equity fund manager to come work with you, he is looking at that sort of a growth potential. He is not happy with a Hindu rate of growth of 8 to 9%. He wants to look at 30, 35% year on year growth. The market potential, the product maturity, and the value creation prospects are some of the things what he will look at. I think I'll, I'll stop here. There are a few more things here in the interest of time, and I'll be more than happy to take a few questions as a part of the discussions. Thank you very much.